Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we are in a different game. This is Planet Crafter. It's a space survival, open world, terraforming crafting game. You transform the ecosystem of a hostile planet to make it livable for humans. You survive, collect, build your base, then create oxygen, heat and pressure to make a brand new biosphere. Well, that's what the blurb says in Steam. The reality of it is it's just a really cool survival game with a storyline. And I've really enjoyed playing it over the last couple of weeks. So what I thought I'd do is put together 20 tips for beginners. Let's get started. Tip 1. When you first crash land on the planet, you end up in a valley. You can see here, this river now fills the valley where I crash landed. And the original pod is just over here. Now it's very tempting to start building around your pod, which is exactly what I did. It seemed like a logical thing to do. But actually, what you want to do is move away from this crash landing pod up to higher ground. Because as you begin to terraform the world, and you get water and clouds, these valleys fill in. And then you end up having to move all of your base up to higher ground anyway. So tip one, make sure when you establish your base, you do it on some higher ground out of the valleys. Tip two, oxygen is always in short supply. I mean, you haven't terraformed the world yet. So what I recommend is you carry on with you some oxygen capsules. So you can right click those and refill your oxygen bar when, you've, when you're caught short. You can make these in the crafter using cobalt, which is a common element in the world. Tip three. Every now and again, you will get meteor showers that seem to want to destroy your base. But it's important to note, they do not. They don't harm anything that you build. So you can spread out and not worry about meteors destroying your items or your builds. It just They just don't. Uh, it's the way it's programmed into the game. So don't worry about spreading out. The meteors will not destroy what you've made. And there is a classic example of how it won't. Tip four. It's not long before you really need to put up your interfaces and your screens. These give you vital information about how you're progressing with your terraformation. This one here, your terraformation index, shows you the four important elements of the terraforming process, the oxygen, heat, pressure and biomass. Now these are important because once you hit different targets, different stages, items are released for you to be able to build. So if you bring up the this interface here, your blueprints interface, it shows you the things that will be coming next once you've hit certain targets in that area. So for example, for example oxygen, I've got one more to go on this particular game and I get that when I'm at 7.50 ppm. I'm quite a long way from that at the moment. And if we look at the heat one here, we've got this one here when I'm at 750 pk. Now I'm a long way off that yet, but it gives you a target, it shows you what will be released and what you'll be able to make soon. And that includes stuff for your exoskeleton. So keep an eye on this one and it's good, it allows you to focus on different areas if you're looking for particular things. Say, for example, if you're trying to get, say, an ore extractor, you know you have to get your pressure up to a certain level to achieve that. Tip five. Don't forget to upgrade your multi-tool, this item, this scanner that you're holding in your right hand here. If you go to your crafting station, there are a number of microchips that you can put into your crafter. You obviously need the construction chip, but the deconstruction chip is important. You will need to take things apart. It's an integral part of the game, so that is really paramount. Don't forget to add your deconstruction tool. And tip six. 
I like to store all of my minerals in their own locker. You get access to this as you move into the game, these larger lockers. Initially, you start off with a smaller trunk kind of container. And on these, I will label them depending on what mineral goes in them naturally. So, for example, cobalt. And then I'll have them sort of centralized around my crafting stations, which are in the middle here. It just makes things more convenient and quicker. There is a lot of crafting in this game. And I would suggest that you come up with some sort of setup like this so that it makes it easier and allows you to know where each item is and reduce time. Tip seven. There are basic core minerals and metals that spawn across the planet's surface. But there are rarer resources. For example, iridium. That spawns in this cave here. You see the one with the sand? It's very distinctive. There's one map in game, so you'll all be playing on this map. And in this cave, you can find iridium. Now, the clue is it's red, and iridium is red. So that is always a good guide. You can see some there. It also spawns all the normal minerals and metals. So what you really need to be able to do is search the planet and find these locations where the rarer minerals spawn. And once you've done that, you can actually build ore extractors. And they will mine for you this iridium. So once you've gathered all from the surface, the only way you can get it from this zone is by putting these ore extractors in. And then you can, you'll have a pretty much a, a limitless supply of that particular resource. And this applies to all the minerals in game. Tip eight. Strangely enough, algae is gathered from algae generators. The clues in the name, but it's not immediately obvious. So when they first came up online I first got access to these I went to it and I couldn't actually click it and find any the algae is under the water here it's hanging down you can click on those and gather those up and that will then pop into your inventory that is how you gather algae tip nine there are certain locations that are sealed by ice these are only accessible once the planet reaches a certain temperature as your terraforming progresses. When you do though, it will reveal caves. As you can see here, there's a little bit of ice left over just as a little marker. And in here, you can find minerals like osmium, which are really important for certain builds in mid game. You will get to a stage where you can generate your own osmium. For example, here I have a ore extractor type 2 and in here you can see I have mined osmium this enables you to build some really good kit but these are very difficult to get to so bear in mind that there are sections on the planet that will open up as you progress tip 10 you will get access to building ladders and they connect up the living compartments. If you place one in a living compartment, it will allow you access to the compartment above. It doesn't take you all the way to the top of a stack of compartments. To reach the third level, you would have to build another flight of stairs next to it, and then that will go up to the preceding level. Tip 11. There are some secret golden crates hidden away in the landscape. Some are under rocks and others are hidden behind spaceships in uh, secret spots. There is actually one that appears here on this spaceship, but I'm not going to tell you where the other ones are. You better find those as you explore. They're well worth it because they have some valuable items inside and then you can actually deconstruct the golden case itself and that gives you some valuable minerals. Tip 12. If you know you're going to die because you're running out of oxygen or fluid, 
try and make sure that you die on a flat surface. When you do die, you drop half your contents in a crate, one of those blue ones you'll see around the map, on the floor. Now, if you're on a slope, sometimes it despawns. It can't settle down onto a surface, and then you will lose your items. So, if you have to die, make sure you do it on a flat surface, such as this bank here, rather than up on that slope over there. Tip 13. Be patient with navigating around the planet. In the beginning, it takes a while. You're pretty slow and you're walking around thinking, this is going to take ages. But pretty soon, new options open up for you to upgrade your exoskeleton. You can see here I have a jetpack and agility boots. This increases your movement speed and allows you to fly with the jetpack, which is really cool. And it's so quick and it makes things so much better. So be patient. It won't be long before you're flying around like Superman as well. Tip 14. These are tier 3 veggie tubes. When you first start, you can build tier 1s, and you can see them here. Iron, ice, and magnesium. There's a lot more ice at the beginning of the game. Now, within these veggie tubes, you place the seeds that you find on crash sites and different locations. When you place a seed into a veggie tube, it has what we call an oxygen multiplier. And various seeds have higher multipliers. And as you explore, you will find the more potent golden seed like this one here. This has a 600 multiplier. So that obviously releases more oxygen into the atmosphere. So it wasn't it's not immediately obvious in the beginning but those seeds have a function and they go into these veggie tubes tip 15 whenever you build anything it contributes to a planet wide total so it's not localized which in the beginning it wasn't exactly clear to me so if I was on the other side of the map and I built a wind turbine there that actually contributes to the power supply back at base. So they're all interlinked. Tip 16. There are a number of crashed spaceships on the planet's surface that you can explore. They have one entrance point and a series of corridors. You will need the flashlight on your multi-tool to explore them and the deconstruction tool installed on the multi-tool as well. And as you explore You'll come across crates, iron girders that have fallen across entrances that you need to deconstruct. And also there are secret compartments. So check the walls because you may well be able to deconstruct them. You will find some really valuable loot in these locations, especially seeing in the early game, you can't actually mine or get access to these special items any other way. Tip 17. Try not to be too overwhelmed by the goals that the game sets. What happens is, as your, say, pressure increases, you will get access to more impressive machinery that helps the terraforming process speed up much more. So, for example, the Drill Type 4 was a real revelation for me. It really upped the pressure, allowing me to get access to the... What have we got here? the ore extractor type 2. Now that's going to take time and in the beginning you're quite far off these larger pieces of equipment but it will come, it does clock up, there's a very good and fluid natural process to how the game evolves and I feel it's very well balanced. Tip 18. In the beginning you don't travel far from your base, you just don't have enough oxygen. But when you are able to travel a bit further, the minute you get access to the beacon, build it. This little piece of kit is a lifesaver. Now you will get to learn the map, but this appears on screen and guides you back to home with ease. And at times you'll be speeding back as the oxygen's running out, and this is the guiding light. It's a very handy piece of kit. Tip 19. 
there is a narrative in game. Once you've set up your communication antenna, you can receive messages through your messages interface. And here you'll get some of the storyline, which you'll be able to read for yourself, no spoilers. And it does give you tips on how, how to survive and things that you want to be doing. There's also another storyline in the game. If you explore, you will find the beginnings of another terraforming base and a narrative there. So there are some story strands in game that make it a bit more interesting and give you a bit more narrative as to what you're doing and where the future might lie. Tip 20. Planet Crafter is packed full of items and quests and goals and ideas. Small to large. I mean, you're terraforming an entire planet. And I think that's amazing. So my tip 20 is get involved now. This is early access, beta 0.4. There's going to be so much more to come. So I would say get involved, understand, learn. And then as the new updates come out, we can then experience that together. Because this is a really awesome game makes me think of Subnautica, the forest, that type of setting um, and it sort of takes me back. There's a sort of nostalgic feel to it. I think it is just awesome. Guys, I hope you enjoyed these tips. It's been fun making them. I, I do like exploring these survival games and hope you enjoy being there as I do that. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.